Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. It is the first Thursday of the month, which means it is recipe time on Across the Fence. Here on CBS, the month of March is also March Madness, with the men's and women's NCAA basketball tournament getting underway in two weeks. March Madness is just one of the themes that Chef Marco is focused on today, and he's also looking ahead to St. Patrick's Day, when corned beef and cabbage are a tradition. But Marco is setting tradition aside to present these recipes. Hi, I'm Marco Yala, and I'm here to share another recipe with all of you. It's March. Spring is getting a little closer. And well, before we go too far ahead, let's remember that we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And that's one of the most fun holidays out there. I love the green and I love the leprechauns and, and all that. A few years back, I had the chance to go to the Emerald Isle and had a great time visiting the Cliffs of Moher, kissing the Blarney Stone, and that's probably the reason why I'm talking here to you, because now I have the gift of gab. So, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, I wanted to make something that is different from, you know, the typical corned beef and cabbage, uh, but that it was still authentically Irish. So. That's how I came up with a couple of recipes. And in fact, we're gonna do a three course meal this month. So let's start with a starter, which is going to be a potato soup. And I know that you're probably thinking, well, Marco, this looks a little plain. And well, yes, this is the base of the potato soup, but it's a nice recipe because you can customize it and you can make it you know, into something a little more elaborate. So let me tell you how to put this together. First, you're gonna chop an onion into very small pieces. Then you're gonna peel and dice three medium Whoa. potatoes. Then, to a large saucepan, you're gonna spray it with a little bit of oil. You're gonna add four tablespoons butter and wait for it to melt. Then you're gonna add the onion and cook it for one minute, coating it completely in the butter. Add the potatoes and toss them well with the onion and the melted butter. Then you're gonna cover the saucepan and sweat the vegetables. And I know that the term sweating vegetables sounds a little weird, but it's basically just pre-cooking them a little bit without getting them brown, and this extracts a little bit of the moisture out of them. Sweat the vegetables for 10 minutes, shaking every few minutes to prevent sticking. Then you're gonna add four cups chicken broth. Cover the pan and simmer the soup for about 20 minutes until the potatoes are tender. Then you're gonna puree the soup using a hand blender or in batches in a blender. Make sure to mix it well together until it's creamy. Then you're gonna add half a cup cream and salt and pepper to season. And you're gonna be surprised how good this soup is considering that it's very few ingredients and it's all probably things you already have in your fridge and your cupboard. So, in this case, I am going to add a little bit of parsley, then a little bit of cheese, and finally, some bacon bits, because bacon makes everything better. And now you have a little bit more of a loaded potato soup. It's a nice, authentic recipe from Ireland, and I'm pretty sure your family is really going to enjoy it. So, now let's go to our main course. And for our main course, I decided to make this little pork pies. And look how cute and delicious those look. Perfectly made, perfectly portioned for one. And I'm telling you, this is a recipe that is delicious and it's very easy. So let me tell you how I made it. First, in a small saucepan, you're gonna mix one tablespoon cornstarch and one and one quarter cups chicken broth. You're gonna bring it to a boil, stirring constantly for about two, one to two minutes until it's thickened. 
Then, in a large skillet, you're going to add 1 pound ground pork, 1 teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon pepper, 1 quarter teaspoon ground cloves, 1 quarter teaspoon nutmeg, 1 eighth teaspoon cayenne pepper, 1 minced garlic clove, and you're going to cook it over medium heat for 6 to 8 minutes or until the pork is no longer pink. Add the broth mixture and cook it for 1 to 2 minutes or until it's slightly thickened. And of course, you're welcome to use your own uh, pastry recipe if you like to make it from scratch. However, all of you know that I am a big fan of easy cooking. So in this case, we're going to use refrigerated pie crusts because they were great. And let me tell you, they come out perfect. Unroll two pie crusts. You're going to cut 16 circles with a four inch cookie cutter. And you're not going to have enough of the already prepared pie crust in order to get the 16 circles. You're going to take the scraps and you're going to roll it again and using your rolling pin and you're going to complete all the circles. And you should have just about enough for your eight little pies. Then you're going to spray muffin cups with cooking spray. Arrange eight of the circles that you cut and you're going to fill each with three tablespoons of the pork mixture. You are then going to place the other circles over the filling and press the edges just like you would to a pie. Then heat your oven to 425 degrees and bake them for about 15 to 20 minutes or until golden brown. And as you can see, the final result is not only beautiful, but they're absolutely delicious. Let me cut one up here so I can show you the inside. And look at that filling. You can see a gravy there. And right now with March Madness, all the basketball games going on, this is a good way to have something that is portable and is easy to eat while you're watching the game. So now that we have that all done, let's go to our third course, which is dessert. And in this case, I decided to make Irish cream truffles. And of course, inside, they have a little bit of Irish cream. So let me tell you how to put these together. Place a saucepan with a little bit of water and a bowl that's heat resistant on top of it. Add chocolate chips and heavy cream and stir until they're melted. Then you're going to turn up the heat and you're going to add one quarter cup Irish cream and a pinch of kosher salt. And of course, you're going to notice that the mixture is very runny. So what are we going to do? We're going to put it in the fridge and cool it for about an hour until it's cool enough to handle. And you're going to take one and a half cups white chocolate chips, two teaspoons vegetable oil, and you're going to microwave them in 20 second intervals until the white chocolate chips are completely melted. Then you're going to take your ganache, roll it into bowls, and set it in a tray that has been prepared with parchment paper. Then, using a fork, you're going to dip each truffle into the white chocolate, turning it to coat. Place it back on the baking sheet and allow it to cool. And to decorate them, you have two options. You can sprinkle them with green sugar, or in this case, I use the rest of my white chocolate. I added a few drops of food coloring, and then I drizzled all of the truffles with it. And let me cut one up so you can see the inside, and check that out. Doesn't that look delicious? Is the chocolate inside, and you can smell the Irish cream, but still is white on the outside and has some green for St. Patrick's Day. So I really hope you enjoy all of these recipes. I hope you make them at home, and I hope you share them with your friends, family, neighbors, or just add them to your regular recipes that you make for your family. And remember that to get these recipes and many other recipes from our archives, you can go to the Across the Fence website. And while you're there, remember to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get the latest updates of Across the Fence 
right on your phone or your computer. And from my kitchen to your kitchen, happy St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy some good food, enjoy good company, and the luck of the Irish. Thank you, Marco, for getting us ready for March Madness and St. Patrick's Day. Five years ago, a former fraternity house at the University of Vermont became the UVM Alumni House. The $9 million project was funded by private donations, and the detailed restorative work was done by experienced Vermont craftsmen and women. We've opened up the Across the Fence archives to take a look at the UVM Alumni House after renovations. I'm excited that after a decade in the planning, we've actually opened the doors to a new home here on campus for all the graduates of the University of Vermont. We want the building to be a home, a home that you feel comfortable walking in the front door. So as you enter the front door of the Alumni House, you're going to be greeted by a UVM student ambassador who will welcome you back to campus and point you in the right direction, whether that be a meeting you're attending or a comfortable sofa to read the paper. What has this process been like? The university acquired the building from the Delta Psi fraternity in the mid-2000s, and since that point we've been developing plans and fundraising to make the renovation possible. The fraternity treated it pretty well, uh, but it did require us to do a complete renovation from mechanical electrical systems all the way from ground to ceiling, including some exterior work. We are thrilled that there are a lot of local craftsmen that, that put blood, sweat, and tears into this renovation process and, and did so with passion that really as you look around the house you'll see the attention to detail is just extraordinary on the wood carvings, the stained glass windows, the light fixtures throughout the, the home have been completely restored by Conant Metal and Light here in Burlington. Uh, that touch of detail is really what separates this building from others. And it is now with my great pleasure to ask you to join me in thanking once again those terrific lead donors. When did it open officially and what's the reaction been? We officially opened on Thursday, September 22nd uh, and the reaction has been overwhelming. For folks that have been in the building prior to the renovation, they're just in awe at how far the building has come. For people that are stepping in the front door for the first time, they're just blown away by the, the historic fabric of the house and the uniqueness of, of the building that we have here on campus. Do you have any anecdotes or stories from the opening that people shared with you? My favorite story is we have an alum back from the class of 1938 who was 100 years old. He was getting ready to celebrate his 101st birthday. He came in the front door and said, I'm home. And not only is it going to be a home for alumni, it's going to be a vibrant special event space. So within the historic main home itself, we have nearly a dozen spaces that can be reserved for small to larger functions. And then we've added a new special events uh, pavilion onto the house that accommodates much larger events. Uh, the response has been tremendous. We've had neighbors actually reach out to us wanting to host family gatherings here at the house, uh, but we've also worked with the Convention Bureau and a lot of the local event planners because it is sort of a unique facility here in the Hill section in Burlington. Certainly a beautiful building. And that's our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. <laughs>